uh, Jenny Rudd. Uh, uh, Jenny, are you there? I am. Hi. Hi. Right. So, Hi. would you like to t tell us about Lady Mary? Yes, of course. So, hello, everybody. A Bonada Richard. I hope I've said that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I became interested in Lady Mary Wortley Montague, hereafter referred to as Lady Mary, about six years ago. Uh, just visiting with my children uh, to Wentworth Castle Gardens and I was drawn towards the Sun Monument with its uh, fine looking obelisk and golden globe at the top and I managed to make out a very faint inscription at the bottom that said, and I'll, I'll read you this bit, uh, to the memory of the Right Honourable Lady Mary who introduced inoculation against the smallpox to England from Turkey in 1720. Now I read this and I thought, I know about smallpox. I've learned about this at school. And I was told that it was Edward Jenner who introduced uh, smallpox back in the late 18th century. And I thought, this, this doesn't look right to me. Does the story start here and does it start with a woman? And I became very interested to find out more. So about 18 months ago, uh, the National Trust uh, took over tenureship, of, went with Castle Gardens with Barnsley Museums and Northern College. And I became a volunteer garden guide there with really the prime purpose to put together a body of research that I could share with the staff, the volunteers, and hopefully uh, with the visitors to tell the story of this remarkable woman. Now I've prepared 10 minutes of stuff, so I'm, I'm gonna cut out the whole uh, middle section and hopefully you'll come along in April. I can tell you more about the remarkable Lady Mary. So, um, Yes, a remarkable woman of her age, a remarkable woman of any age. Uh, Mary was largely self-educated. Uh, she refused to limit her education to the refinement of the domestic role that 18th century women were expected to occupy. Um, she lived at Thorsby Hall, which is a very grand property in the Duke was in Nottinghamshire. And she had access to the library there and she taught herself uh, to read and write Latin so that she could access uh, academic texts on a range of subjects at a time when women were banned from entering university, they were banned from entering professions. Uh, she, so she was very outspoken throughout her life. Uh, she challenged her perceptions of women's role in society. She really was a, a proto-feminist. Uh, she identified as a writer she wrote throughout her life, but her, her writing tended to be uh, circulated within society in the forms of her letters and poems, and she was only ever published uh, the year after her death. Uh, she was also in the context of the theme of the meeting today, uh, possibly bisexual. She certainly had relationships uh, with women, but unfortunately all of her diaries were burnt by her daughter after her death to avoid any scandal. So a lot has been lost, but we can pick up things from her letters. So how did uh, Mary get involved in inoculation and smallpox? Well, the first step really was that she got smallpox. It was endemic in 18th century uh, Britain, um, one in four died. It was also a universal disease. You would expect to get smallpox in the course of your lifetime, very much as we might expect to get the common cold. And it was a really feared disease. So she got smallpox, um, but she survived, but was terribly disfigured. And it was a year after this that she traveled to Turkey. Uh, she was kind of the ultimate uh, travel writer, if you like. She was incredibly curious, very open-minded. She didn't mind uh, dressing up in local costumes to just get access to the cultures of the East. And in the spirit of curiosity, she went into a bathhouse in Turkey. Um, she observed the naked women within and she thought, they're not disfigured like me. Where are their smallpox scars? She said, do you have smallpox? And they said, oh, yeah, we've got smallpox. We've got it under control. We practice inoculation. Mm -hmm. So she um, observed this technique, had her son inoculated and wrote back home to say, uh, I consider it my patriotic duty uh, to champion this technique uh, back in England. So she came home, but she was very pragmatic and uh, had a lot of social intelligence. And she realised uh, that if a woman was seen to be introducing a scientific innovation, it had very little chance of succeeding. Uh, 
So she petitioned the men in her life. She used a lot of persuasion, a lot of perseverance, and she persuaded influential men to uh, champion a series of experiments on uh, into inoculation. The first person being inoculated being her daughter, Mary. Now, unfortunately, um, well, word got out that she was behind uh, these experiments and she uh, came in the fiery line of a lot of abuse. She was accused of being an unnatural mother. Uh, her intelligence was described as masculine. Um, her motivation was described as um, preserving beauty, whereas Jenna was attributed with saving lives. Uh, but one of the early inoculees uh, were the Wentworth family. And obviously they did appreciate uh, Mary's social achievement because they erected the Sun Monument. And it is the first monument to the intellectual achievement of any woman in Britain. The only thing that the Wentworths got wrong was the date. Uh, the first inoculation was in April 1721, uh, which obviously has incredible uh, contemporary relevance. It's the first example of inoculation. And here we all are waiting for our letter mm -hmm. to go and get inoculated, not vaccinated mm -hmm. uh, today. So at Wentworth Castle Gardens, uh, we're planning a series of events. Uh, we've got an art installation that's starting in March, uh, just a collaborative effort with local uh, families uh, to reinterpret the Sun Monument. Uh, we're updating our social media with kind of questions, frequently asked questions. We hope we'll be asked about Lady Mary and providing answers for them. Uh, we're having a blue plaque um, unveiled uh, to remember Lady Mary's achievement and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, lots of other things. Hopefully I'll be speaking to you in April more about Lady Mary then.